we're talking on this broadcast each day about the subject, what is the meaning of life? And we've been trying to catch up with where we are in the discussion today. This is about a broadcast probably 182. And so you can see we've been involved in this discussion for probably about uh, nine months so far this year. And uh, the way we have proceeded is we've tried to find out where the earth came from, uh, how it came into existence. And we've concluded that from the order and design that is in it, there must be an intellectual being behind it. We've said being because we reckon the creator of the earth must be at least as personable as we are in order to make us persons. And then you remember we tried to find out if he had ever communicated with us in any way and examined the claims that various people like Buddha and Zoroaster and the Hindu scholars and Confucius have made uh, that they are understanding or telling us what the mind of the Creator is in regard to us and the purpose of our lives. And we discovered that they were all uh, in the same boat. They were all limited to this earth. That is, they all died and were buried on this earth. None of them proved in any believable way that he had actually pierced beyond the farthest astronaut or pierced beyond the farthest star and in some way been in touch with the origin of the universe. And that's when we began to examine the life of a remarkable man who lived in the first century of our era, who did in fact break through death and is the only one who gives us intelligent, reasonable evidence for believing that he did in fact come back after he had been killed and live on the earth here for more than a month. And that is, of course, the man Jesus of Nazareth. And you remember how we examined the history books that tell of his life so that we could be sure that he was actually a historical figure and so that we could be sure that he actually did rise from the dead. And, of course, as we examined the more than 4,000 Greek manuscripts that stand behind the history of the first century that we find in that old book, the Bible, in the New Testament piece of it particularly, we began to realize that we're dealing with history that is far more reliable than that of Julius Caesar or the Greek or Latin historians, and that we are dealing with history here that is incredible in its provision of documentary evidence and in the psychological and ethical impossibilities of deception or untruth. And if you want to go back into that discussion, please do write and get some of those ordinary cassettes. And I did also try to write a little booklet. It's just a small thing. Is the Bible history or myth that you might also like to write for? But there are lots of other books that do it, I'm sure, much better than that. But you, you might want to look at it uh, to review some of the arguments. But we came to the conclusion that uh, the history of that first century is utterly reliable and that, in fact, Jesus of Nazareth did live and did die and actually did overcome death. And we examined his life, you remember, to find out if he was a kind of lunatic that was claiming to be God or if, in fact, he lived a life of balance that makes us respect him and if, in fact, he was the foremost ethical teacher in the whole of mankind's history. And we concluded that he was and that he was really the son of the maker of the world. And so we have started to study his explanation of the meaning of our lives, of why we're alive. And you remember we have reached the point in that discussion where we see that the creator has made us on three different levels of life. That is, each of us have three kinds of life, we have physical life, which is our body, and we can see and hear and touch through the five senses of our physical life. We can perceive the world around us. Then within that, we have a soul. And that's what the old book, the Bible, calls it, soul. But the Greek word for soul gives you a clue as to our contemporary 
uh, explanation of it because the Greek word is suke, and it becomes through those sound changes of our language the word psyche or psychological. And so the soul that is referred to by men like Jesus and by other people in the Bible is really a reference to the psychological part of our beings, that is, your mind and your emotions, and that that is inside our bodies. So it wears our body almost like an overcoat. And our soul is the part of us that, well, you can tell, it's the part of us that is conscious not so much of the world, uh, that's the body's responsibility, but it's conscious of itself. In other words, you can use your mind to look in upon your own thoughts and to think, what am I thinking? Or how am I feeling? And so the mind and emotions and the will are actually the psychological part of our being, and that's the self-conscious part of us, the part of us that distinguishes us from the animals, because we have the only brain cells that are able to think about themselves. And then within that, Jesus and his predecessors said that there is a spirit, that is, there is a part of us that is the essential me. That's how we've defined spirit. It's you as you really are. It's the very essence of you. When we talk about the spirit of Churchill, or we talk about the spirit of George the Sixth, we talk about the very essence of the man, the very heart of the man, the kind of person he really was. And of course, we've also pointed out that it's the part of us that is able to contact the creator of the universe. It's through our spirits that we are able to relate to the maker of the universe. And that is, in fact, one of the great reasons for us having spirits. So we've come to that point where we see that we are made up of spirit, soul, and body. And then, you remember, we began to talk about how we were meant to operate. And we said that the way the Creator meant us to operate was that our spirits would be related to Him and would receive from Him the directions for our life. And we would express that through our souls, and our souls would then transmit that to our bodies. And then, of course, through actions and words and attitudes, we would fill the world with that kind of life whatever was God's will for it to be. And you remember, in order to make that clearer, we took, uh, well, you can do it various ways. You can actually draw one circle, and that can represent the body. Then you can draw another circle inside that, and that can represent the soul. And then you can draw another circle inside that, and that can represent the spirit. And the way, in fact, we were meant to operate is by the Creator. And you could draw, oh, I suppose an X outside the concentric circles and label that the Creator, and then put an arrow from that into the center of the innermost circle. And the Creator intended to give us His life into our own spirits. And then you can draw an arrow out from the center of the innermost circle out to the circumference of the outermost circle. And that was the way we were meant to operate. From the life that the Creator gave to us, we were meant to live from the inside out all the time. So that, in fact, we would fill the world instead of empty it. We would fill it with the kinds of things the Creator wanted done. We would dig the gold that he wanted dug. We would mine the coal that he wanted mined. We would bridge the rivers that he wanted bridged. We would de develop the trees and the plants that he wanted developed. We would presumably develop the planets that he wanted developed. But we would work from the inside out. And of course, what we have said is that we men and women determine no way. We're not going to be dependent on the creator of the universe. We're going to operate on our own behalf. And we're going to operate from the outside in. And if you like to see how that would work, just draw an arrow from the outermost circle into the innermost center of the inner circle. And that's the way we men and women have been operating 
since the creation. We've been trying to get from outside the life that we were meant to get from the creator of the universe. And, of course, it has resulted in a tremendous perversion of our personalities. Let's talk a little more about that tomorrow.